Okay. What we're going to do now is finish, in, finish uh, joining the penny on the stick to the Barocca tube, so it's the uh, complete displacer assembly. So that will now fit in like so. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually wrap up the inside of that with a piece of sandpaper. Uh, because when you're using an epoxy joint, it likes to have a rough surface. Uh, we're going to gently rub the sandpaper around there as well to rough it up. up. Then, then we're, we're going to clean it and, and mix up the epoxy, and um, push, push them together and use this jig here to make sure it's all square. square. If this part here of the engine isn't actually square, the engine won't ever run true. It'll bind on the displacer. So, right. so with your piece of uh, garnet paper, just gently go around the inside. Like so, as you can see, there's scuff marks inside there. That gives the epoxy something to actually bind to. So that's that part. And I usually just run it just around the top there. Like so. Okay, next thing we actually need to do is clean this so that it, there's no swarf left on it. So we're just going to use metho, methylated spirit. And a clean rag. So what you do is make a wad with this like so. Put it on top of the bottle and just tip it up, hold it, and release it. And then you've got metho in your rag there. Then what you do with your finger, sit it inside and we're going to run it round. Okay, lift it out and if there's grey, like aluminium shavings on there, get another piece and have another go because there's still rubbish in there. So the cleaner this is, the better the joint you will get. Okay, that's pretty clean but we'll just have one more go at it. Okay, so once you clean this you don't actually touch it again because you'll contaminate it again, so that part's clean. Okay, the next part we're going to clean is around here. If you've used all your methylated parts of the rag, grab another bit. There we go. And wipe it all the way around there. Just pay attention that you get it right in the shoulder there. Clean off. Same again, don't touch this once you've cleaned it. Okay. The epoxy we're going to use is Shelley's Aerodite. We're just going to use the high strength stuff. So this is a one to one mixture. Uh, we're going to use paddle pop sticks to mix the two parts together. And you can put gloves on if you feel that you're going to get it on your hands. If not, don't put them on if you're not going to get anything. Yep. Righto, so to get the glue out. Oh, it comes a bit out. Okay. Because, because this is a one to one, one, one mixture, mixture, you want exactly the same amount of A and B. So, so this, this is A. A. So what you should do is just put that on the edge of the board and put a blob like so. Yeah, yeah, put the lid back, back on that one, one so you don't cross contaminate the tubes. That one down, take B, and you want the same amount on the board, the board next to it. So you come across a little bit, like so. So that's B, put the lid back, back on. on. Okay, with your paddle pop stick, what we're going to do is come in, scrape, scrape, and fold the mixture in. Once I've mixed it all together, I'll scrape the whole lot off, put it on the board, wipe it, and have another mix. What, what that, that does is if there's any residue of A or B left, left we've, we've left, left it here and we've got the full mixture just here. Just scrape it through, go through, wipe, and another go. Wipe that off. Now what we'll do is take the whole mixture, like so, wipe it on the stick and come across to a clean piece of board. So, wipe, wipe it all off, that, that stick goes there, there. get a clean stick, stick and just, just mix it again. Okay, okay. our glue's ready to go, our epoxy. 
So the next thing we're going to do is with a paddle pop stick and we're going to wipe it all the way around the inside of this. So the motion is from there. What that does is it puts all the glue residue up inside the displacer tube. So the neater you are, the better the job you get. I'm sorry. Put the blob on and just drag it over the edge of the tube. We've got a fairly even amount all the way around on the inside of my tube. Now we're ready to assemble it. Okay, so we've got this jig here which has got some holes drilled into it. So what it does is it lets you place your part in there like so. Take some masking tape, so this is what's actually going to hold it for the glue dryers or the epoxy dryers. And just place two pieces, one piece there. There. Right, push the whole assembly part down so it's flat. Now take your tube and we're going to place it on, lift it back off. And what that does is just in case there's any air hooked uh, caught in there, and then we're going to check it with an engineer square to make sure it's square to this base. It's true to that. So on your tube goes. Okay, sometimes if there's a little bit of air built up, it'll actually lift it back off. All we're going to do is just pop, pop it, twist, twist it, it, and push it back, back down. down. So, take an engineer square so you can either come in over the top of the masking tape and just make sure that is square. So what I'm doing is sighting the bottom and the top and just pulling it over with my fingers, come back to the other side, make sure it's square down there, which is good that way, and we'll check it this way. Got to go that way a little bit. So once you're happy that it's square, what you can do is put your finger on top and just bring up the pieces of masking tape. Like so, where you just pinch the corners there, bring up that piece of masking tape and pinch the corner. Now what I'll do is actually just check it again, again that I, I haven't moved it while I was putting the masking tape on. So, so, so I'm happy, happy with that way. way. These tubes usually go on a bit of a taper, so you want the same angle. Back the other way. Okay. So we're square in four directions. Now yeah, what you do is actually put your hand in underneath here and push the whole assembly up. If I grabbed it by the top there, it'd actually pull it apart and undo all the work we've just done. Lift it up. And bring it up to the drawing rack. Place it in there and then usually what you do is just write your name or group number on the board there so that ABA staff know who owns it. That has to be left to dry for 24 hours before you put it into your...